Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is 12 o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a Q&A. This is where I take all your questions that you've answered over the course of the week, and I try to answer them to the best of my ability. I absolutely love the Q&As because it's always different every single week. I never know what I'm going to get. I've said this before. I don't read these questions beforehand. Literally, the first time I read them is when I'm sitting down at this list, this laptop answering the questions. So you're getting, you're getting off-the-cuff answers that haven't been prepared. Anyway, Anyway, if you want to have a question answered, leave it in the comments to this video. If you put it elsewhere on the channel, there's a chance I might see it, but in all likelihood, I probably won't. So if you want to have a, que a question answered, make sure you leave it in the comments to this video, and I will get to it next week. And remember, don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you haven't already done so. Um, that would be really nice of you. Thank you very much. Got no reason to say that other than please. Anyway... Uh, I've got some really interesting questions this week, uh, looking at it. So we're going to get straight on with the first question. Okay, so the first question is from David Blaine. Hey man, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Here's a question. When you go out with your friends, like a bar, do you always carry stuff? Well, that's a really good question. I actually do carry stuff, but I try to make it as organic as possible. Um, I I've talked about this on the channel before, but one of my pet hates is when magicians are caught out and about and people know that you do magic or know you're a professional magician and they go, oh, you're a magician, do a trick for me. And they go, oh, I haven't got anything on me. I, I, I think that's terrible. If you don't want to perform, if you don't want to be a performing monkey, just go, hey, I'm not in the mood, that's fine. But don't say, oh, I've got nothing on me because we should always be able to do magic if we want to, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jeff McBride, he always talks about how he's a magician 24-7. Now, I don't think that I'm going to take it as far as Jeff does because he's just like completely insane with it. But I do think you should be able to perform magic anytime, anywhere. And what I don't want to do when I'm going out with friends that aren't into magic, what I don't want to do is go out with a thousand tricks in my pocket. You can always tell somebody who's new into magic. When they're new into magic, they go out and they've got literally everything on them. Right, okay, I've got 15 coin gimmicks and I've got some sponge balls and I've got some sponge bunnies. I've got a couple of decks of cards. I've got some Sharpies. I've got this, I've got that. And they go out ready for any situation. If you've seen my EDC video, my everyday carry video, I actually counted down the 12 best everyday carry tricks of all time. And for me, an everyday carry trick it's a trick that feels like it belongs. It feels like it's organic. It feels like it should be with you, but it's able to do some amazing magic. So, for example, my routine key master, I think of that as an everyday carry because you would expect somebody to have their keys on them, but those keys allow you to do some amazing magic. Another example of that is gossip. I know I'm using a couple of my own tricks, but why not? Gossip is a perfect example because although you could argue and say, well, why are you carrying a, uh, a torn page of a magazine in your wallet? You can justify it. Hey, I, I, you know, I ripped this out of my wife's magazine the other day. Let me show you something with it. And it all fits inside the wallet. It makes sense. Um, you wouldn't carry a chop cup around with you, right? Um, so... It, it, that's that's my opinion when it comes to everyday carry. If you haven't seen the EDC video, please check it out. Um, I count down my favourite everyday carry videos, uh, my favourite everyday carry tricks. And um, I am doing a follow-up to that video as well. So I am doing another video just because there's so many other things. I mean, there's so much when you actually sit down and you think about it. There's so many good tricks that you could actually carry around with you that feel like it's organic, but you're ready to go anytime, anywhere. So I'm not going to get into them now. You can go check out that video. Uh, but think about what you can carry around with you. I mean, it doesn't have to be a specific trick. Throw some elastic bands on your wrist if you want to, and then you're good to go with elastic band magic. Have some coins in your pocket. You're good to go with coin magic. Have some business cards on you, and then sort of learn some routines of business cards, and you're good to go with business cards anytime, anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be a trick that you've bought that you include in your wallet. Um, but, you know, that makes sense. And then obviously you've got your phone as well. You know, with apps these days, there's so much stuff you can do just by literally having your phone on you. So in answer to your question, when I go out with friends, do I carry stuff? Yes, but you wouldn't think it. It's not like I pull out a deck of cards and I'm going to do a card trick. When I pull something out, like Key Master, for example, you know, that sort of thing, it feels like it's something that you take if you're going out anyway. So I hope that makes sense and you go check out the video on uh, the everyday carry that I did. 
Okay, so the next question is by Tom Lyons, and Tom says, I asked this question before, probably on the wrong video, so I missed it. My question is, do you think you'd be able to get an interview with Jerry Sadowich? It would be amazing if you could. He's a genius. Uh, the guy is a genius. I absolutely love Jerry Sadowich. I'm a big fan. Um, I'm quite lucky with the Talk Magics. When I started doing the Talk Magics and the site, the channel was new, um, I was kind of, if you look at the early episodes, I was going to my friends and the people I know really well and getting them to do interviews. Um, you know, I was going to people like Gary Jones and Chris Congreve and Cameron Francis and saying, hey, will you do an interview with me, please? And then what's happened is over time, as the channel has grown and as I've been doing more and more interviews and more and more interviews and more people watch these interviews, I actually have people coming to me now. So John Bannon, for example, who's an absolute hero of mine, uh, I didn't go to him. He kind of came to me via someone else. So I, I think that's the that's the point. When it comes to the talk magics, I'm quite lucky. You should see some of the names of people I've already interviewed or I have uh, arranged interviews with. I mean, there's some huge names coming up. But the thing with talk magic is I want to temper that. I don't want it just to be massive name, massive name, massive name. One thing that I always wanted to achieve with the talk magic interviews is bring people um, onto the channel that you might not have seen before. Uh, you know, people like the Owen Stricklands and the Tom Mullingers of the world. People like Ashley, who came on the channel a little while ago. A lot of people didn't know Ashley, but she is absolutely incredible. So it, it has to kind of um, be a bit of both, if that makes sense. And now when it comes to Jerry, I would love to have Jerry Sadowich on this channel because I think him and I are quite aligned in our views in many, many ways. Um, the problem is Jerry hates magicians, or at least... I don't know him personally. I've met him a few times when I went shopping in International Magic and he was always really nice to me. But uh, you hear the stories of how he was an absolute arsehole. Um, I think Jerry is great. I would love to have him on this channel. If anybody here knows Jerry or if by chance Jerry is watching this, dude, I would love to have you on the channel. Um, but I wouldn't know how to get hold of him. And I have a feeling if I asked him, he wouldn't just say no, but he'd probably swear at me uh, a lot, I think. Um, but I don't know. You know I, I will reach out to him. I will try and make it happen. But if there was somebody that I was uncertain of, it'd be Jerry Sadowich. So watch this space, but I can't promise anything. Okay, so the next question is Frank uh, Tugas. How are you doing, Frank? Hope you're well. I may have asked this before and missed your response, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it again. Uh, doing a formal close-up show where you're seated and not moving around. I haven't ans answered this before. When you're doing a formal close-up show and you're seated not moving around, okay, like this sort of situation, uh, what are your thoughts about using a savant? I know there are two on the market. One is from Abbott's, and they've remade the one they sold for years that attaches to the table. It's about $65, and one for Shin Lim that's $100. Have you seen them, and have you used them? Do you recommend them, especially for video presentations? The other thing I want to mention is John Bannon's Move Zero DVD series, any thoughts on that? Right, okay. So let's skip Bannon for a minute and let's go for the savant. Um, here's the thing with the savant. If you are performing in a situation where you can make use of, of a savant, I absolutely think that you should have that in your, in your setup, 100%. Uh, I very rarely, I can't think of any situations other than on Magic TV, I can't think of any situations where I'm actually in a situation where I use a, a savant. Um, I know a lot of the street guys that I see use savants, and that's absolutely awesome. And let's be honest, some of the moves that you can perform with lapping and, and combining that with a savant are crazy. You know, Slidini's work on it, uh, David Roth's work on it, Rocco's work on it, and I'll tell you who else has got some incredible work um, with lapping, and that's Eric Stevens, the guy that created Colour Sticks. Eric Stevens has some phenomenal work on lapping and uh, and using savants. I, I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I remember watching uh, Roth and reading Roth's book and, and learning all of the routines that required uh, lapping. I was actually quite good at it, but I had nowhere to actually perform it. Uh, and then over time, as you you start to realise that that sort of stuff isn't really practical in a lot of situations, you stop doing it and you find alternate methods to do the same thing. But it's like anything, you know, if you are in a situation, if you find yourself in a situation, let's say you're doing a, 40, let's say you've got a little close-up theatre 
and you've got a table there and you know everybody's sitting there watching you and you've got this table 100% or if you are wanting to enter you know FISM or a magic competition where you can dictate the environment in which you're performing uh young free springs instantly to mind then absolutely go with a savant 100% but i think in order to make it or in order to make it worth the money You've got to at least regularly perform in a situation where you're going to make use of it, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so I never am in a situation. Now, that might change. Um, I'm seriously considering adding a Bunko booth option to my uh, corporate website, slightly unusual. Uh, and if you don't know what a Bunko booth is, it's kind of like a booth, kind of like a bar just for a magician, though, and people come over. Rather than you mingling around and doing mix and mingle, people come over to you. I think that would be a good sell for a lot of corporates, especially post-pandemic. So that's something that I'm seriously thinking of. If I ever got myself into a situation where I was offering that as a package, I'd include a, a, a savant in the uh, in the setup for that 100%. I can't really tell you a bit about, um, about savants because I've never used one. I I don't have one. I know what they do, um, but I'd, I'd be guessing if I said I knew the differences between the uh, the Shin Lim one and the Abbott's one. I don't know. I'm really sorry. Um, my only advice is, you know, read reviews. I'm sure there's somebody out there that does do uh, lapping on a regular basis that has reviewed these products. And, and in terms of spending money on these things, 100% spend money on them, but make sure that you're in a situation where you can you you have uh, 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 you're performing in a place where you can actually use a savant if that makes sense okay so the next question is from island kahan uh, uh, i think i butchered your name i'm so sorry uh thanks for the amazing content you are more than welcome are there any books or content you'd recommend that focuses on a particular gimmicked card i.e blank cards double backers double faces i'm asking this question after watching your tricks that we haven't seen before, the XXX series, in which I've discovered some great tricks. You know what? I bought out a DVD many, many years ago called Blank, and it was all routines with blank cards, and you had blank cards within there, and uh, there were blank cards in the packaging, and you had all the blank cards you needed to perform the routines. And uh, I still think that that's one of the best, even though it's mine, uh, so I'm biased, I think it's one of the best products on blank cards, mainly because there's nothing really else out there. Uh, Michael O'Brien has got some amazing work with blank cards. It's absolutely worth checking his stuff out. Um, but outside of the stuff with um, that Michael does and the stuff that I do, I don't think there's anybody else that's done a full project on blank cards that I'm aware of. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of routines that come out with blank cards, um, but but nothing. And when I bought out blank, the original intention was to have a set of three DVDs that came out. So Blank was going to be the first one, and then Backed was going to be the second one, and then Faced was going to be the third one. And I just never got round to it. And then I left the Magic Community and, um, and, and you know, kind of didn't come back for a long time. So those projects never saw the light of day. Um, and I, I, I think that it's absolutely worth doing a project like that because you are right, there's nothing really out there. You'll have this project that's got one trick with a double backer, this project that's got one trick with a double backer. So um, I, I, I suppose, no, I, I don't know of any projects, to be honest. You can get blank uh, or you can get, uh, you can get Michael O'Brien stuff, but actual routines with lots of double faces or double, back, uh, double backers, I don't think there's anything else out there. Um, it is something that I've been talking about with the 1914 um, because I'm doing uh, a, a series of projects with the 1914 at the moment, um, kind of reimagined classics and Visible is the first one of those that's coming out in August. And uh, off the back of that, um, we're going to be doing some other projects along the line of the uh, along the line of the reimagined classics. Uh, the next one's already ready to be shot. I think we're shooting it in the next couple of months. And we have talked about doing projects with double uh, with backed cards and double faced cards and blank cards and revisiting that stuff. So I suppose the question is: Is this something that you guys would be interested in? You know, from the Magic Lives I do and the Three Best Tricks series, that I'm really fascinated about taking a particular gimmick and kind of doing a deep dive on it and 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 squeezing as much out of it as I can. I really enjoy doing that. Is that something that you would uh, like to see? Or maybe I should just put all of this stuff up on Netflix. I mean, there are tricks with blank cards on Netflix. There are tricks with double faces and double 
Michael Backers, but it's not like it's a it's a massive uh, sort of project about double backers. It's not like that. I think there's three routines with double backers on metrics at the moment. So, you know, there is some stuff on there when it launches, but, um, you know, would you guys like to see a more of a kind of deep dive project? Let me know in the comments down below. So the next question is by Magic Tricks. Tricks with a K and a Z, because that is how you're cool. That's how you roll. Uh, nice to meet you, Magic Tricks. Thanks very much for the kind words. Would you like to do a Penguin Live of your own one day? What tricks would you put into that lecture? Um, you know what? I said that I went through my bucket list last week. And one of the things that I've always wanted to do is a Penguin Live. And uh, that might be happening sooner rather than later. That is something that uh, very possibly could be happening in the, in the not too distant future. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that I... Um, I want to do, and I think it's, uh, I love the Penguin Lives. I've been a subscriber for years. Uh, I think that they're absolutely amazing. There's some awesome Penguin Lives. And I think what I'd want to do if I was doing a Penguin Live is I just want to deliver amazing value. You ask about what tricks I'd do. I think I want to do a little bit of everything. I think I want to uh, maybe go through some of the classic routines that I bought out like 10, 11 years ago, some unpublished stuff, uh, some other bits and pieces. I'd want to deliver massive value and then maybe talk about other issues as well. Maybe hit on a little bit of marketing and theory. Uh, to be honest, I'd be guided by you guys. As and when I do a Penguin Live, I would probably reach out to everybody on this channel because you know, I've got a, I've got an audience on this channel. It's a place where I can ask questions. I'd probably ask a question and say, what would you like to see? For example, when I did Smoke and Mirrors, uh, everybody there said they wanted to see coin magic and they wanted to have some advice on marketing and they wanted a rant. So in the first half, I did nothing but coin magic, mainly unpublished stuff. Then in the second half, I opened with a rant and then I went into some advice on marketing and we finished off with some of the stuff from my Cy Stebbins project, which is coming up with Alakazam soon. Um, so yeah, I, in terms of the Penguin Live, what would I do? I'd reach out to you guys. In fact, there will be a Penguin Live coming sooner rather than later. Let me know in the comments down below, what sort of content would you like to see me put on a Penguin Live? I genuinely would love to know. Okay, so the next question is from Navayo. Uh, hey Navayo, how are you doing? Uh, he says, how do you get rings from spectators? Um, I'm guessing we're not talking about theft here and we're talking about borrowing rings in the context of a trick. Um, I ask them, <laughs> I just ask them. Um, I just say, hey, I'd like to show you something, can I borrow your ring? Now, what I do tend to think is you don't want to lead with this. So you don't want to open and go, hey, my name's Craig, I'm the magician here, I hope you're well. Uh, can I borrow your ring there, please, madam? I'd like to borrow your ring. I don't think that's a good idea because you have to establish credibility first. You've just walked over to them. They have no idea who you are. They have no idea what you do. Um, and so it's a big leap of faith asking them to lend you a ring straight off the bat. So what I would do first of all is I'd establish credibility, really kind of win them over uh, with your personality and your magic. And then at that point, you say, well, you know what, guys, I'd like to show you something absolutely amazing. In fact, and one thing that I do do is I say, can you hold your hands out like that, like you're playing the piano? Everybody hold their hands out like that. And they think it's some sort of trick and they're holding their hands out. And I'm just scouring the, uh, the group looking for somebody who doesn't have a stone in their ring. Ideally, I want a plain wedding band. I don't like using stones in rings. I've heard horror stories about stones falling out. And I don't want to be that in that situation. So whenever I do a trick with a ring, and you'll see this on videos, if you watch me doing magic with a ring, there's never a stone. I get them to hold their hand out. I scour for a wedding band. And it's quite a funny moment. So I go, fantastic, everyone hold their hand out. You right there, sir, that looks like a lovely ring. Can you do me a favor? Can you grab it off for me? I need to borrow that. And everybody laughs and, uh, and, and you're into the routine. And I think it's really important that when you're performing, uh, this, is a, this is a good rule for performing in general, but especially true when it comes to doing magic with a spectator's ring. Uh, you want to kill dead time. I see so many magicians and they'll go, can I borrow your ring? And the guy's going to be there taking a few seconds to get it off. And it's, it's like, 
just standing there waiting and, and, and that just kills the performance dead. The best thing to do is go, hey, can I borrow the ring? And he's there taking it off. Well, you know what? A lot of people struggle to take these rings off. You, you, you look like you're struggling there. So, or whatever. Or, or pull out a pen and go, while well, this is happening, let me show you a quick trick with the pen. Watch the pen disappears. Look, it's right here behind your ear. It's a magic pen. Look, it shrinks, blah, blah, whatever it may be. Do something to just keep everyone's attention. Then you get the ring back and you go into whatever routine you want to do. And there's a lot of routines you can do with the ring. Um, but always have a backup as well, because if you don't have the right ring there or nobody wants to lend you a ring, well, you've got a couple of choices. You either use your own ring, but if you're doing a ring to impossible location, that's probably not going to be very impressive. Or the flip side is you just go into a different routine, depending on what you do. Um, but yeah, in terms of actually getting the rings from the spectators, I would say just ask them with confidence and with a smile in your eye, a smile and a glint in your eye, ask them and you shouldn't have a problem. It's a bit like stage performers. I hear stage performers go, how do you get people on stage? Everybody I ask says no. You do it with confidence. You walk down with confidence and you just say, hey, fantastic, I'd like you to join me on stage. And they come, you know, but it's all about confidence. So just ask for the ring and they will give it you. Okay, so the next question is by Reese Whitehead. Hi, Reese, how you doing? A bit of a weird question, okay? What trick could you do to announce someone's pregnancy? Wow, that is a weird question. What trick could you do to announce someone's pregnancy? Well, I'm guessing, uh, uh, like, this isn't a thing that you'd prepare for. You know, right, I need to have a trick in mind so that uh, when I go to my residency, uh, if there's a woman there and she's feeling like desperate to tell people she's pregnant, she's not told anyone and she takes me to one side and whispers into my ear to help her, uh, that's never going to happen. So I'm guessing you've got some sort of booking or you've got, uh, you know, the, the, I've had that in the past with, uh, you know, hey, I want to book you and I need you to help me propose to my fiance or to be or whatever it may be. So I, I, it's not out the realms of impossibility to have somebody say, you know, uh, can you help me announce my pregnancy? And this is the sort of thing that I'd probably sit here for a few hours and come up with different routines. Uh, and yet I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. So the way that I would probably do it, and I'll probably think of a better idea down the line, but the way that springs instantly to mind now is to have a letter deck. Um, have a letter deck and uh, show that all the, an alphabet deck, show that all the cards are different letters um, and uh, show all the cards are, uh, are different and they're all alphabet cards and have somebody shuffle the cards. And then maybe the person who you're trying to announce the pregnancy for, um, they're, they're picking cards out. So, or people are picking cards out, that's it. Let's say there's a few people watching this, you're getting various different people to pick cards, somebody shuffles the cards, and then you put them in front of the person, and you say, well, you could have cut any letters, you could have took any letters, you could have mixed them up as much as you want to, and then the person who's pregnant starts dealing them out in order and turning them over, and it comes up, I am pregnant, and, you know, I, I, I think that might be quite nice, because you've got the impossibility of all the cards being shuffled and cut, and various different cards being taken out, and then they're being shuffled again, and you go, I, okay, I, a, I, A, that doesn't make sense. I, A, M. Oh, I am. I am. Okay, well, that's weird. That's a bit of a coincidence. I am P. I am. I am. Does anyone know when I am? I, and you kind of maybe go down the route of saying I am pregnant. I think that would work really well. Um, along those lines, you can also have like a, a, a blank deck of cards or a double blank deck of cards. And you could write life... Um, uh, sort of life events on there, like moving house, getting married, um, getting pregnant, and a whole bunch of different stuff. And uh, and yeah, you show all of these, and you have them shuffled, and you say um, uh, to somebody else, hey, shuffle these cards. You're going to pick one at random, and whatever card you pick, it's going to happen to that person. And then they turn it over, and it's, I'm pregnant. I don't know. There's a few different ways you could go down there. I'll come back to you next week. I'll actually have a think about this, because this is an interesting thing. I'll have a, a come back to you and think about think about it. But off the top of my head, I think the alphabet trick, I think that that could work really well. That's a really nice way to put across a message. But have you got an idea? Let me know in the comments down below. How would you, how would you, what trick would you do to get some, you know, to announce that somebody's pregnant? Okay, so the next question is from David Moore Magician. How are you doing, David Moore Magician? Hope you're well. Craig, look forward to hearing how you used, how gravity went at a real gig. Thanks. Um, it went well. It could have gone better. It went well. Nothing went wrong, 
Okay, so it's not like I exposed it. It's not like the thread broke. None of that happened. But I just didn't feel like I sold it as well as I could. And I think that just comes down to inexperience. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it again 100% because I'm going to get good at this. But I suppose the plus side is it worked. The routines that I wanted to do, that I planned out to do, worked, which is great. Uh, but and it, no thread broke, which was going to be one of my biggest concerns, which is also really good. But I don't think I sold it very well. And I think the reason I didn't sell it very well, I was, I was nervous as hell about doing it. Um, and I think that's the problem. A lot of the time, you see a lot of pros, they don't put new stuff into their act. And one of the reasons they don't put new stuff into their act is because they're nervous. They know that the stuff that they do is always going to work. And so they do the same stuff over and over again. And that's how come the act never changes, right? I've never been like that. But gravity is a different thing because I've never really done thread work before. So the whole concept of using thread freaks me out it makes me nervous and I was nervous I don't think I was visibly nervous I don't think if you were there you could tell that I was nervous but if somebody knew me really well like Sarah for example if she was at that gig she would have been able to tell that I was nervous but I forced myself to do it I did it probably in a close-up job like eight times uh, and I did feel it was getting better every single time but it's still not where it needs to be. I came back, I practiced for another couple of hours. I've practiced for a lot longer since then. It's definitely moving in the right direction, but I'm still not there. I will continue to tell you. In fact, one thing that I've been thinking to do on the channel, and then I wanna know what you think about this, um, is kind of doing a show once a month or maybe every six weeks uh, and doing like a video where I look back at some of the reviews that I've done that I've now performed in the real world. And I give you updated reviews based on performing them in the real world and get performance footage as well. So it might be a case of, well, you know what? This was not very good. I said that it was only 50%, uh, but I went out and did it. And oh my God, it's brilliant. I'm changing my mind, which is very unlikely. Or more than likely, hey, I tried this at a gig. And it was good, but I, I came up with this, which I think makes it better. And just kind of feeding back to you guys, uh, you know, because the problem is, I mean, I go further than most because most reviewers don't even perform the trick. Um, they'll, they'll just literally talk you through what's in it. Okay, this is the trick. This is the pros. This is the cons. This is what it does. This is what the tutorial's like. This is what the quality of the props are like. This is what I think of it. And there's nothing wrong with that, and that's absolutely fine. I've always tried to do a performance of the trick as well. And the reason I want to try and do a performance of the trick is because I think that you can't review a product unless you actually have gone to the point of learning it. Because if you haven't been to, if you haven't got to the point where you're learning this trick, right, how can you possibly, uh, like, if you're not comfortable performing it in front of a camera or real people, how can you give it a proper review? Because I don't know about you guys, but I'll make a judgment on a particular trick. And then when I perform it in front of a real person, th that judgment will completely change. I'm like, okay, this is going to work brilliantly. Okay, now I've tried it. I can see that that's not going to work. Or this is the best idea in the world. Actually, no, this is the worst idea in the world. So I, I don't understand. I don't understand. I think more people should perform the tricks that they review. But by the by, I think it would be quite interesting to revisit a product and give it an updated review. And it doesn't have to be long, spend five minutes on it, you know, a clip of what uh, what I said beforehand. And do I agree with that? Uh, let me know if you think that's a good idea, because if it is, that's something I'll do. If enough people like the idea of that, I'll probably give that a shot. Okay, so the next question is from Thomas Shelvin. Hey, Thomas. Uh, obviously, places like Big Buy Media, Penguin, Murphys, etc. do lots of non-slight card magic. But what other non-slight tricks can you recommend for someone looking to expand into other non-slight areas of magic? So we're looking at non-slight tricks that aren't card tricks, right? Um, well, I mean, the guy to speak to about this is Wayne Dobson. 
um, because Wayne's whole range is pretty much self-working. It has to be because obviously of the situation he finds himself in, he can't do sleight of hand anymore, but his mind is just as creative as it ever was. So he comes up with lots of very interesting concepts and tricks that don't require any sleight of hand at all. So the first place that I would consider looking at is Dtrix, which is Wayne's website, because there's a ton of tricks on there that you'll be able to watch straight away and uh, there's no skill to it at all. The next person I'd look at is Ryan Schlutz. Uh, Ryan is an amazing magician. Obviously, he was part of, you mentioned Big Blind Media, he was part of some of the effortless card magic, but this is a guy that's been pioneering um, tricks that require very little skill or sleight of hand, not just with cards, but with absolutely anything. So Ryan's latest trick, Random Happenings, um, doesn't require any skill at all. If you can... Uh, give a spectator a book and have it ripped up, you can do the trick. Um, so Ryan is somebody who you absolutely should check out as well. So we've got Wayne Dobson, we've got Ryan. Um, I know you said, card, you know, away from card magic, but I would seriously consider looking at um, Card card College Light by uh, Roberto Jobby. Um, there's some great stuff in there. It is card material, but there's some great stuff in there. Also, have a look at Gary Jones's material. Gary Jones, uh, a lot of the stuff that he does is completely slight free, especially in his two ebooks, Life's a Beach and Life's a Beach Volume 2. Um, I seem to remember a really killer trick with some dice. Um, there's a few tricks with dice that are self working, and there's, uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that requires no skill at all. So I'd look at, uh, I'd look at Gary John's material as well, look up his two eBooks, they're really good. Um, yeah, that's that's where I'd start if I were you. That's where I'd start. So go go, go for all of that material first of all, and uh, and then just keep your ear to the ground. Look, look at the skill level. Um, there's a lot of stuff, by the way, I'm not gonna make this into a cheap plug. There's a lot of stuff on Netflix that has, we're giving everything a star rating from one, which is completely self-working, to five. And there's a lot of routines on there that are one. I know that because I've been cataloging them the last couple of days. Okay, so the next question is from Frank Valenti. Hey, Frank, uh, can you give me any update on your Cy Stebbins project? I'm very excited to check it out. Well, the Cy Stebbins project is coming out with Alec Azam. I actually spoke to Harry Nardi today, and uh, the decks are currently being made up. As far as I'm aware, the packaging is done. The decks are currently being made up and the tutorial is done. And as far as I'm aware, the trailer's done as well. I've done my bit. I'm waiting for them to do their bit. Uh, and when I say the decks are put together, this Stebbins project, uh, it's not just about um, Cy Stebbins. You get a special deck of cards that there's like 13 routines half of the routines can only be done with this special deck of cards. Now, you wouldn't be able to tell the special, they don't look gimmicked in any way, and using that deck, you can do any other routines that you'd want to with a normal Stebbins deck, or you can shuffle it and go into normal card tricks, absolutely fine, but the way that it's gimmicked allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff that you couldn't do with any other, any other Stebbins deck. Um, I did this, I, I performed some of this stuff uh, at my lecture at Smoke and Mirrors in Bristol and uh, floored a whole bunch of magicians. I closed my lecture on it. I did three routines for the Stebbins Project and everybody was like, oh my gosh, I want this now. Where can I get it? When can I get it? Well, it's coming out through Alec Azam. It's coming out soon. Uh, it's coming out in September, uh, I believe. Last time I spoke to Peter Nardi, he said September. Um, so look out for it. They do a live launch. I'll be shouting about it on the channel as and when I know. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, it's coming out at some point in September. And I will tell you more when I know more. So the next question is from Gert Jean Sangrien. Hello, Gert. How are you doing? Will you address the continuing Murphy's Magic tutorial pop-up login madness for the tutorial of your own coming upcoming trick? I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I have got something out coming out with Murphy's, actually. I've got a couple of things coming out with Murphy's. And, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm contributing to the pop-up problem. Having said that, I sent... I did an Onish trailer. I don't know if you guys saw it or not. I bet a lot of you did. I did a uh, an Onish trailer on the Murphy's Poffert problem. And I, I edited this whole video together. Hey, are you looking somewhere to host your tutorial? Like, it was really cheesy. And uh, 
I, I, I didn't know whether the Murphys had seen it or not. So I sent it over to a whole bunch of people at Murphys. They thought it was hilarious. Um, so hopefully they're web guys watching and they realize that their website needs a major uphaul, a major overhaul, a major fix. And hopefully somebody will fix it so that when my project comes out with them later on this year, people don't have to deal with the Murphys pop-up problem because it is an issue. Murphys, fix it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I am contributing to that issue. Thank you for pointing that out, Gert. Okay, so the next question is by David Casper. Hey, David, thanks for the kind words. He says, what is your favorite trick with a mem deck? I'm um, looking for a really cool mem deck trick. Well, first of all, you absolutely should check out my uh, my my video that I did on the mem deck. It's the hows and whys of the mem deck. You can find it in the magic stuff playlist right here on this YouTube channel. Um, but my favorite trick is by Darwin Ortiz. I cannot remember if I put this in that video. I did perform a whole bunch of stuff on that video. I don't know if this is one of the ones that I performed, uh, but I love this because uh, it's a great opening routine if you're doing mem deck magic because it's really quick, but it's also super impossible. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below. It, you can get it as a download. It was in his books. It was also on one of his projects, but you can get it in a download. Um, yeah, you can definitely get it. It was on a, a um, Vanishing Ink download. So you can get it from uh, from Vanishing Ink. So there you go. And also, I'm pretty sure that it was. Um, I'm pretty sure it was on one of his Penguin Lives as well. But this for me is my favourite uh, opening routine with a mem deck. So you've got your deck set up in mem deck order. And uh, and what I love about mem deck magic, and I talked about this on the hows and whys video, is I love the fact that you can take a pick a card trick and turn it into a name a card trick. So you have somebody name a card, and let's just say they name the, I don't know, the King of Diamonds, okay? So you then, as soon as they name the card, you cut the deck and you say, look, I'm gonna give you a card. Uh, we'll give you a card. I want you to take this card and put it face up into the middle of the deck. So they then do that. They put it face up into the middle of the deck, like that. And they can put it anywhere they want to. And then you come here uh, and you say, look, you could have put it anywhere you wanted to. It was completely your choice. Nobody nobody told you where to put it. You put it right there. Is that fair? And you put it next to uh, two cards. You put it next to this card. That's not your card. That's the Ace of Clubs. And uh, and you put it th here next to uh, next to this card. And what was the card that you named again? And they say the King of Diamonds. And you turn it over and it's the King of Diamonds, which is really, really nice. And the nice thing about this is all I have to do is that, that, and then just go here and I'm reset, ready to go again. So it's, it, or, or I'm reset to go into any other mem deck routines that I want. So it's really nice because that moment where they freely name a card and uh, when they've named that card, you just immediately into a situation where you go, okay, brilliant, take this card, put it anywhere in the middle that you want to, and it, it's right next to their card. And the other thing I love about, about this is it keeps the stack intact as much as I love Simon Aronson's material with the mem deck, and I do love his material, and I think that you know he created a lot of the stuff that people um, use these days. A lot of his material destroyed the stack, and I don't think there's ever a situation where a stack should be destroyed. Um, the other thing that I like doing is is just jazzing with a deck. You know, Mike Close, um, you know, d d talks talks about this an awful lot in his books. Uh, especially workers number five and uh, closely guarded secrets, and he talks about you know just 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 jazzing it. So you know somebody names a card, let's say they name the Jack of Hearts, for example, and uh, you cut the deck, and you have to kind of work out a way to get there every single time. So uh, I cut to a queen, um, a queen of clubs. Well, you know that's that's not um, that's not the Jack. Of, you wanted the Jack of Hearts, didn't you? Um, well, this is a queen, so if I go Q, U, E, E, N, I get to this card right here. And what was the card you named again? The Jack of Hearts? Boom, there it is, the Jack of Hearts. Isn't that amazing? So it's the whole concept of uh, taking the deck and kind of just jazzing with it. Um, this, is, this is something that Ryland uses all of the time. Like, he literally every single day... Uh, he's jazzing, but it's nice. I mean, you you can get your phone if you've got Siri or you've got um, you've got Alexa. You can get Siri to name a random card. You just go Siri, name a card, 
Uh, let's do one more. So, for example, uh, I, don't, I don't know the two of spades. So you just say, OK, let me see if I can do this. Let me see how close I am. In that case, that was pretty damn good. Right. Um, and it's just a combination of estimated cuts along with um, uh, just jazzing it and, and not having a kind of a set plan. Um, and once you get good at this, you can actually get the spectator to cut the deck. So let's say somebody names the five of clubs. I know they need to cut about 30 cards down. So I'll say cut just over half the deck and they, they might cut here like this. And then I can, uh, I can see where I am. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of close there to be perfectly honest, because I'm, um, uh, I'm, I'm three cards away at this point. So I could, for example, do a triple lift and show immediately I've got the five of clubs. Or uh, I could say, uh, okay, you cut the deck any way you wanted to. Um, is that right? Yes. And you could say, well, you cut to the three and that's not your card. But if I just uh, take that three and flick it, it turns into the, uh, it turns into the five. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, but that's the way that you practice. That's the way that you practice. And that's the way you get good by just constantly doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and yeah, the, 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 but to answer your question, the Darwin Ortiz trick is my favorite trick with, uh, with a mem deck. That's the one that I would, uh, I, I always open my mem deck set with that trick. Okay, so the next question is by Zach Magic Israel. And Zach Magic Israel says, will net tricks be divided into sections um, by magic types such as card magic, mentalism, etc. If you don't know what Netrix is, it's uh, a thing I'm launching later on this year that's going to be like uh, Netrix is Netflix for magicians. And you'll be hearing more about this as and when the following weeks and months um, go past. And yeah, it's divided in so many different ways. So yeah, it's divided into sections. So uh, mentalism, card magic, coin magic, packet tricks. Uh, what's really nice as well is you've got really in-depth slight sections, like really in-depth slight sections. And when you're watching a trick and you're watching the explanation, rather than, let's say you're having to do an Elmsley Count in the trick, rather than having to explain an Elmsley Count, because I hate that, I don't know about you guys. I know how to do a freaking Elmsley Count, right? So when I'm learning a trick and then the guy on the screen spends 25 minutes teaching an Elmsley Count, I'm like, I know how to do this. Um, what, what this does is it's glossed over. So it's like, okay, so now you do an Elmsley Count and it will just flash up on the screen and there'll be a link through to the slide section where they can learn the Elmsley Count. Um, and there'll also be a link at the bottom, which is pretty cool. Um, and, and the slide section is all in depth as well and is all searchable. And yeah, it's, it's, it's separated into genres, but you can also search by by artists so say for example you really like I don't know John Carey um, you can search with all of John's stuff or you can search with difficulty level because each trick has a difficulty level so you can search for difficulty levels and also there's a study guide in there as well so there's how to go from beginner to intermediate from intermediate to advanced from hobbyist to pro and this sort of stuff and there'll be recommendations in there on which tricks you should do to get to the next level and so on and so forth and it's not just about tricks there's theory I've just shot uh, a, like a, a thing with Steve Della Steve's put a course on there on restaurant magic like because steve was the don of restaurant magic when he was younger like when he was working in london he was just doing restaurants all the time and bars and nightclubs and he's just done like it's probably an hour and a half of material on all of steve's thoughts on restaurant magic and how to get a restaurant and how to keep a restaurant and how to um make a restaurant work for you and the tricks you should do in a restaurant oh killer absolutely killer and that's just one of the courses um so yeah it's all searchable by artist by difficulty level by theory but yeah, yeah it's searchable in so many different ways so yeah it's very user intuitive but thanks for the question okay so the final question today is from theodore 270 hello theodore and your question are you trying to get me in trouble I think this guy's trying to get me in trouble. My <laughs> Theodore's question is, who is your favourite host of the Wizard Product Review? Okay, me. There you go. End of. Done. Me. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, no, it, it, it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult because... Uh, if you don't know what the Wizard Product Review is, it's an online review show. It's really the the kind of the first online review show. Everybody else that came after this was kind of copying the Wizard Product Review, uh, myself included. However, I feel okay with it because the Wizard Product Review back in the day was me. 
Uh, it was me and David Penn for five years, and we talked about this. Me and Dave talked about this on the interview but, you know, uh, that I did with him in depth as to why I'm no longer on it. I love that there's still conspiracy theories. People, uh, conspiracy theories as to why I left the Wizard Product Review. It was just really because I was really busy. <laughs> you know, you can read more into it if you want to, but whatever. Um, but, you know, I mean... Sean originally was the guy that replaced me uh, when I left. And then after Sean, Wayne came in. And now it's kind of like uh, uh, sometimes there's David uh, Penn, there's Sean Hayden and there's Wayne Fox. Sometimes it's just Sean and, and um, David. Sometimes it's uh, it's David and uh, uh, Wayne. I've never seen Sean and Wayne on the show without David Penn. I don't know if that's ever happened um, but sometimes it's two of them, sometimes it's three of them. It reminds me a little bit, if you're into wrestling, it, it, the three of them on there remind me a little bit of the New Day. In the, you know, it, it, there's various different combinations of them that you'll see. Um, but then sometimes all three of them will come together for a, for, for a big event. But whatever. Who's my favourite? It's difficult to say. I've known Dave for years. I think he's an incredible magician. He's an incredible thinker of magic. Uh, Dave has an innate ability of taking something and making it better. Which is why he makes such a good consultant. Which is why so many big name magicians want to have him as a consultant. They want to have him as a consultant because he has this really incredible ability to look at a situation and just immediately offer advice that will take it to a next level, whatever it may be, whether it be just some staging presentationally with a slight, whatever it may be. It, he's incredible at that. There's nobody better. Um, Wayne is just a super entertaining guy. Like he lectured at uh, Bristol the other week and me and Nemid Phoenix drove a four hour round trip to go and watch him lecture because we wanted to support him. And he's incredible. His light heavy routine bought the house down at Smoke and Mirrors. His, uh, his, his, uh, and if you haven't seen Wayne's lecture, he does this thing. He opens the lecture with, um, with this like little mini London, um, uh, sort of uh, toy thing that looks like a, a phone box and it's like a card in the box style routine with this but at the end it's, I'm not going to give it away it's brilliant it's absolutely incredible um, so I, I think that Wayne is is he's his sleight of hand is second to none uh, and uh, you know everybody loves him everybody loves Wayne Fox and then you've got Sean Hayden who I don't really know as well to be honest I don't really know Sean uh, I know Wayne We've worked with each other a couple of times. I know David. I don't really know Sean. Um, don't know him. Don't know him. Uh, I did during lockdown um, when the country was completely locked down and we couldn't even leave our house. Um, I was trying to support as many magicians as possible by watching live Zoom shows. And uh, uh, me and me and Ryland and Thea and Sarah, we watched so many Zoom shows, some really good ones, some really, really good ones. And uh, we watched Sean's. We, we bought tickets to watch Sean's Zoom show, which was really good. He did some incredible card magic. I was very, very impressed um, with, with his card magic. And I, I, I know he performs at a very high level. Um, I just don't really know him very well. Every single time I've seen him perform and I've seen him speak, um, I've, been, I've been really impressed. But I, don't, I, just, I just don't know him. I don't know him. Um, so I can't really say. I think the three of them work really well together. Um, and I think that, you know, people go, oh, it's not been the same since Craig wasn't there. I get what you're saying. But the bottom line is, I think that those three have been together longer than me and Dave were together. I think it's because me and Dave were the originals and so on and so forth. But those three have been together longer than me and Dave were together. And they do a cracking job. They really do. Um, I did love on their show a couple of weeks ago, um, they said, hey, it's very, very important that we make the distinction. The Wizard Product Review is the only show... Uh, the only review show online where, uh, you know, it's 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 two or three pros talking about products and we're all professionals. And uh, yeah, I, I get what you're talking about. I understand. Yes, that's that's correct. My co-host is an eight year old boy. But, you know, it's an eight year old boy who's gone out and done probably 50, 60 shows at this point, And he started performing when he was five years old. He's not a layman. He, he knows about magic. And, and, you know, he performs two tricks every review show every week puts his heart and soul into performing two tricks every single week. So maybe I need to make a claim. We're the only review show online that performs every single trick we review. Ha, there you go. That's our new strap line. We perform. 
So there you go, guys. That is another Q&A in the bag. I hope you enjoyed this week's. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate it. You know, I love doing these Q&As, but they live and die by the quality of the questions that are asked. So guys, if you have a question, it doesn't matter how big, how small, how silly, it can be a personal question, it can be anything you want to, it doesn't really matter, I will answer it. Leave a question in the comments down below and I will get to them next week right here on Magic TV. And don't forget, if you wanna see more videos like this, please do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, that would be amazing. And don't forget, tonight at nine o'clock, so tonight at nine o'clock, I have another review show special. And tonight at nine o'clock, I'm going to be doing a review show special on Look Sharp. Uh, Wayne Goodman is going to be here on the channel. I'm going to sit down and do a mini interview with Wayne. We're going to talk about Look Sharp and the new version, Look Sharp Anniversary Edition. Then I'm going to swing back into the studio, perform the whole routines for you, talk about what I think, talk about the pros and the cons, and give it a review. So if you want to know more about Look Sharp 2.0, then make sure you're back here at nine o'clock right here on Magic TV, and I will be back here again on Monday uh, with three videos, a five by five at nine, uh, six o'clock we've got a live, two o'clock we've got a shorts. Either way, have a fantastic evening. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic.